Uh, I bought a Tapper Cult at the Keeneland September sale and incredibly excited about that purchase. Uh, it was a cult that had plenty of size and scope uh, and carried himself with, with a real presence that, that drew me to him. I bought a Tapper Colt out of Black Coronas at the Fazy Tits in July sale, out of a Curlin mare, big beautiful horse. We're real excited about him coming up in the spring. Tapperit, standing at Gainesway. Hey everyone, David Aragona here with another edition of the Time Form US Road to the Derby series presented by Gainesway, as Gainesway is presenting all of our Kentucky Derby prep coverage at the Daily Racing Form for this 2022 season. Focus of this video is a race on Sunday, a 50 Kentucky Derby qualifying prep, the Grade 3 Sunland Park Derby going a mile and an eighth at Sunland Park. The main derby prep this weekend, obviously the Louisiana Derby on Saturday, but the Sunland Park Derby might produce a Kentucky Derby starter as 50 points will be enough to get into the Kentucky Derby field and the winner of this race will receive that amount. Let's throw up the field for this race as we have eight runners signed on. The favorite is likely to be the number four, Slow Down Andy. He is one of three California California shippers that will be contesting this race. Also among that group is the number eight straight up G who's coming off a local prep victory in the mind that bird derby slowed on Andy though, who's listed as the morning line favorite. He's a horse that actually has a prior graded stakes victory to his name when he won the grade two Los Alamitos futurity at the end of his 2021 season, uh, got his campaign started off to not the best start in the risen star last time, but he's definitely getting some class relief against a softer field at Sunland park on sunday some other horses that could track support in this race are a pair from the steve asperson barn drawn down towards the inside classic moment and costa terra and then the others are some more locally based sunland park runners before we move on to the main contenders, let's take a look at the pace projector for this race. And if you watched uh, the recent Mind That Bird Derby, no surprise to see the number eight straight up G shown on the early lead. This is a horse that has a lot of early speed. He was the pace setter in that local prep, and he's likely to be the pace setter once again, stretching out to the mile and an eighth distance in this Sunland Park Derby. There are some others with tactical speed, like that morning line favorite, Slow Down Andy, but he's not a horse that needs the early lay the lead. And you could say the same about some of the other horses that are projected to be in the stalking position here, like Classic Moment, the number five, Bye Bye Bobby, and a few of the others that are shown further back in the pack are horses that will be looking for some pace to develop on the front end because we'll be trying to pass the front runners in the lane. Let's now take a look at the, the race uh, at the end of the 2021 season for Slow Down Andy, the morning run favorite. That is the Los Alamitas Futurity, and he was the winner on this day as he comes into the stretch in those red and silks towards the outside, taking over from the eventual runner-up in this race, Messier. Now, a lot of you are familiar with Messier as the recent winner of the Robert B. Lewis Stakes at Santa Anita, and a very impressive winner he was as he came out of the second-place finish in the Los Alamitas Futurity to win that Robert B. Lewis by 15 laps. Uh, so that definitely flatters the form of Slow Down Andy as he wins this race. But check out Slow Down Andy coming through the stretch as he uh, finishes about a length ahead of Messier. He was not the most professional sort as he ran through the final quarter mile of that Los Alamitas Futurity, kind of swapping leads, lugging in a little bit. He definitely was getting tired at the end of that race, and he was able to gut out the victory, but he didn't really give you the impression that he's a horse that's going to want to go a lot farther than a mile and a 16th in the future. Uh, he tried a mile and an eighth last time out when he came off the layoff in the Risen Star at Louisiana, at uh, Fairgrounds, and just was no match for Epicenter. Epicenter is going to be pretty tough in the Louisiana Derby, taking place one day earlier at the fairgrounds this weekend uh this is definitely a softer spot for slow down Andy as he tries the Sunland park derby but he's gonna have to get back to a better effort than he put forth in the risen star last time because he was pretty dull that day he was wide around both turns breaking from post 10 in a 10 horse field and maybe he just needed to start coming off the layoff. He has uh, trained in blinkers since then. His last workout in particular was with blinkers on, and he will be racing with blinkers added in this race. So we'll see if that maybe adds a little bit more speed to his arsenal as he competes over this nine for long distance. Uh, he's probably not going to make it to be in front of straight up G in the early going, but he could be the kind of horse that wants to take up a stalking position in this race. I'm not sure that I necessarily want him as the favorite because he just has that one speed figure in the low south future that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb but he is a horse that definitely is going to be competitive in this race off that performance from last year. Let's take a look at his main rival, Straight Up G, who's coming off that victory in the mind, that bird last time. Let's look at the stretch run of that race. He's coming into the stretch with the lead, a pretty sizable lead at that, as this horse does present a... Does, uh, uh, 
have a ton of early speed. Uh, and he set a pretty honest pace in winning this mind that bird derby going uh, 46 and four to the half mile ran a sub 24 third quarter to kind of open up on this field around the far turn. But you can see it takes its toll on straight up G coming to the finish line as he swaps over his left lead. He's obviously getting very tired at the end of this race and some horses that he'll be facing off against here are closing on him at the end of that race like bye bye bobby and classic moment they were definitely making up ground on this horse going the mile and the 16th distance last time so you might say to yourself how is straight up g going to get a mile and an eighth if he was speeding so badly going the mile and the 16th last time well I think he got maybe a slightly too enterprising ride in that race, as I was saying. He really kind of pushed on the gas around the far turn. He paid the price in deep stretch of that mind, that bird derby. I would imagine that his rider is going to maybe uh, take a bit more of a conservative approach this time, breaking from the outside post position. He's probably quick enough to clear the field in the early going. So I think they'll be able to dictate how fast the early fractions are, depending on how much pressure is applied by horses like Classic Moment and Slow Down Andy, who's facing off against once again. I do like this horse's PPs and the trajectory of his performances. He showed him a lot of ability. It is the second start of his career when he won going six furlongs at Del Mar, getting a 110 time from US speed figure. I think it's interesting that since then, his connections have been committed to going these two turn distances. He's a big strapping son of straight fire, a California sire, who we don't know a whole lot about. I think this is just his first crop. So we're not sure if the progeny of that sire really want to go two turns and have a lot of stamina, but straight up G seems like a big strong horse that might be able to get these distances with some experience. So I think that he's a horse but with the right pace that might be able to handle the mile and eighth distance, especially against the kind of field that he's facing in this Sutherland Park Derby. Two Steve Asperson runners in this race, one of which was chasing straight up G last time. The number two classic moment is that horse. And I thought that he ran okay in the mind that bird derby. He was making up some ground in the late stages to be third that day. Can't say that I'm thrilled with his performances prior to that. He was contesting a fast pace in the Southwest in his prior race, but the Southwest hasn't necessarily come back as the fastest race overall. Some of the horses that did well in there did not run back to be that competitive in the next race on that uh, Oakland Road to the Derby, the Rebel Stakes. So a uh, classic moment. He's run okay in his last couple of starts, but he's probably going to be chasing straight up G here. He uh, was not successful with that strategy last time out. He's not a horse that I'm anticipating is going to get a lot better going the mile and eighth distance of the Sutherland Park Derby. So he's not one that I was that excited by. Another Steve Asperson runner is the number one, Costa Terra. He's going to be a bigger price in this race. He's eight to one in the morning line, and he definitely has some upside, but this is a horse that I've been interested in at different points in his career. I thought that he was maybe a long shot to take a look at in the Southwest Stakes. Clearly, he did not run well that day at 16 to 1, checking in ninth. Just never really a threat, despite getting a fast pace to close into. They tried an easier spot last time, faced off against Allowance Company, and that was not successful either, as he uh, just was never really a factor in that race. He had a bit of trouble in the early going as he got a bit too rank under Francisco Arrieta down the backstretch, but he really had no closing punch in that race. So it doesn't really bode well for him stretching out in distance once again here. Uh, he's a horse that I do think has some potential once he figures things out, but it hasn't happened yet. I'm not anticipating that it's going to in this tougher spot, the Sutherland Park Derby on Sunday. Another horse that we could take a look at that's coming out of a local prep race for the Sunland Park Derby is uh, Pepper Spray, who is coming out of the Riley Allison Derby, which he competed in two back. Let's take a look at the stretch run of that race when he got up to win by a neck over today's rival Bye Bye Bobby. Now, this was the third victory in a row for Pepper Spray, and actually he was three for three to start his career. He is no longer undefeated, though, because he did come back in the Mind That Bird Derby last time and finished far behind straight up G. So he did not come back and duplicate this ever, but I thought he was game to win on this day as he fends off Bye Bye Bobby, that gray horse, in the late stages. Though, like I said, that last effort for Pepper Spray, it's a little bit concerning as we take a look at his past performances, and he just has never really run a speed figure on the time form rest scale that suggests he's quite good enough to take on runners like Slowdown Andy and Straight Up G. So I'm not really viewing him as a major contender in this race. I'm actually more interested in the horse that finished just behind Pepper Spray in that Riley Allison Derby. That is that gray horse, Bye Bye Bobby. And Bye Bye Bobby actually was second in both that race and the Mind That Bird Derby last time out when he ran against Straight Up G. I showed that replay a little bit earlier, and Bye Bye Bobby was that gray horse that was taking the best late run at Straight Up G. 
strategy of merely going. This has been a really frustrating horse to watch because he came from off the pace in his career debut to win a stakes. But ever since then, he's been a bit of a head case. He got way too rank in the early going of the springboard mile in his second career start. Was, again, too rank in that Riley Allison Derby two back. Probably was the best horse in that race, but got a very uncomfortable trip and ride, just never really settling. Got a better trip last time. Again, made an early move in the opening half mile, but did settle eventually and finish off a little bit better. I feel like his rider wants to get him a little too far back early in his races, and that prompts this horse to get really rank under him. So I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that it's the same rider on board once again, and he could again have trouble getting to rank, especially if the pace is not developing on the front end. So I worry about the trip this horse is going to get, though. I do think there's some ability in there somewhere. So he's the horse that I would want to use underneath in this race. Let's throw my picks for this Sunland Park Derby. And I'm going to try to make this a gate to wire score for the number eight straight up G. I like the visual of this horse. He's a big, strong son of uh, straight fire. And I feel like he might be able to get this mile and make this dense if his rider, Ricky Gonzalez, is able to control things on the front end. So I put him on top. I just prefer him of the two favorites because I don't totally trust the number four slow down Andy to get back to that big performance that he put forth at the end of last year in the Los Alamitas Futurity. But I do have that favorite in second. And I've got some bigger prices in behind, like that number five, Bye Bye Bobby, who I do think can be a threat in this race that he finally puts it all together from a trip standpoint, but I just don't totally trust him to settle and get the right journey that he needs uh, under the ride that's going to be on him. So it's the number eight straight up G for me in the Sumlin Park Derby on Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks to Gainsway for presenting this video. Good luck to you if you're playing the races this weekend.